Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about dapaglyphosine. What is this drug dapaglyphosine? The suffix glyphosine indicates this drug is an inhibitor of sodium glucose transporter 2, commonly known as SGLT2. We have few of the other drugs with similar suffix such as canaglyphosine, empaglyphosine. All these are sodium glucose transporter 2 inhibitors. Here we can split the suffix into three parts, gly, flows and in. Here the term gly indicates this drug is related to glucose. The term flows indicates the flow and finally in indicates inhibitor. So the suffix glyphosine indicates glucose flow inhibitor. So all these drugs like dapaglyphosine, canaglyphosine and empaglyphosine, they are going to inhibit the sodium glucose transporter 2. Thereby they inhibit urinary glucose reabsorption resulting in the increased excretion of glucose. So when the glucose is excreted, the serum levels can be reduced. That's why drugs like dapaglyphosine are indicated in type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now let us see the structure of dapaglyphosine. So this is the simple structure of dapaglyphosine. It is neither related to sulfonylureas nor related to glitazones. Now let us see how this drug acts. Dapaglyphosine acts on the sodium glucose transporters which are of different types. So SGLT1 and 2 are present at the different locations. They are present on the heart as well as they are present on the kidney and small intestine. So among these, dapaglyphosine acts on SGLT2 receptors which are present on the kidney. So within the nephron, S1 segment of proximal convoluted tubule is abundant with SGLT2 receptors. Now on this location, dapaglyphosine acts, thereby it inhibits the flow of glucose and inhibits its reabsorption. So this is the proximal convoluted tubule which is the S1 segment and here this is the inner membrane, apical membrane and other one is the basolateral membrane. Within the urinary filtrate, glucose as well as sodium are present. Now they can be reabsorbed at the apical membrane through one of the transporter SGLT2. Sodium glucose transporter 2. This is a transporter through which both sodium as well as glucose are simultaneously transported. Both sodium as well as glucose can enter into the tubular membrane but they can be reabsorbed into the systemic circulation through different types of pumps present on the basolateral membrane. For the reabsorption of sodium, one of the pump is present sodium potassium ATPase pump which exchanges the sodium for potassium. Now by this pump, sodium is going into the systemic circulation and potassium is coming into the tubular membrane. In this way, sodium is going to be reabsorbed into the systemic circulation but for reabsorption of glucose and the transporter is required, this is nothing but GLUT2 receptors. So through these GLUT2 receptors, glucose can enter into the systemic circulation. In this way, glucose is reabsorbed into the systemic circulation and in the diabetic patients, this reabsorption increases the glucose levels. Now the drugs like dapaglyphosine can inhibit this SGLT2 receptors. Thereby, they can inhibit the reabsorption of glucose. So, glyphosins are the glucose flow inhibitors where they are going to inhibit the reabsorption of glucose into the systemic circulation. What are the precautions? One of the important precautions of dapaglyphosin is that this drug can produce some symptomatic hypotension. This is one of the important precautions of dapaglyphosin because this drug can produce volume contraction of intravascular fluid. Because of this volume contraction, there will be decrease in the blood pressure resulting in the symptomatic hypotension in the patients. And due to the reduced body volume, there will be low urinary volume as well as we have the dry conditions like dry mouth can be observed and even the pulse rate may be increased. So all this can be observed with the dapaglyphosin because of symptomatic hypotension. And this condition can be further increased by use of other drugs like loop diuretics which again produce hypotension as well as volume depletion. Similarly, in the elders with age greater than 65 years, there may be increased volume depletion when this dapaglyphosin is used. 
and even with patients having decreased renal function with estimated glomerular filtration rate EGFR is less than 60 ml per minute per 1.73 square meter of body surface area again in such patients this dapaglyphosin may increase symptomatic hypotension so in these patients this drug should be carefully given and in the renal impaired patient this drug should be avoided similarly second important precaution is with the glucose levels insulin is going to be prescribed to the diabetic patients which produce hypoglycemia as one of the important side effect but we have here the other anti-diabetic agents which also increase the insulin release and they act like insulin secretogogs the best class of drugs are the sulfonylureas which are going to stimulate the release of insulin from the beta cells we have here the drugs like glipizide, glibenclamide, gliburide all these drugs are going to increase the insulin release and they can produce hypoglycemia similarly if you have the other drugs like glenides which are acting like sulfonylureas such as neticlinide, rapaglinide they can also increase the insulin release and they can produce hypoglycemia so any of these drugs like insulin preparations or insulin secretogogues can produce the hypoglycemia along with these drugs if dapaglyphosin is going to be prescribed this can further increase the hypoglycemia so this is another important precaution that should be considered when this dapaglyphosin is given with other anti-diabetic agents similarly dapaglyphosin can also increase genital mycotic infections this is again important precaution when this dapaglyphosin is used both in the women as well as men within the women it can produce vulvovaginal candidiasis the yeast like fungal infection and vulvovaginitis inflammation of the vagina similarly genitourinary tract infections both in the males as well as females so again the care should be taken when this dapaglyphosin is going to be prescribed and any symptoms of fungal infection should be thoroughly checked since this drug is going to increase the urinary excretion of glucose there may be an increased risk of fungal infections because glucose acts as a good source for growth of the fungal infections so genital mycotic infections are possible with SGLT2 inhibitors like dapaglyphosin similarly this drug can inhibit renal functionality so it can produce the impaired renal function in the patients this may result in the decreased estimated glomerular filtration rate we have seen that this EGFR may be fall less than 60 ml per minute per 1.73 square meter of body surface area so when this EGFR is less than 60 this drug should be avoided and it can also reduce the creatinine excretion resulting in the increased serum creatinine levels and finally it may lead to renal failure in the patients so care should be taken to avoid renal impairment and if a patient is already having any renal impairment this drug should be carefully given when this EGFR value is less than 60 then this drug should be avoided similarly dapaglyphosin can also increase the LDL cholesterol levels so it can produce dyslipidemia by elevation of LDL cholesterol this is significant to the patients who are having the diabetes associated with atherosclerosis and this drug may also increase the risk of bladder cancer as well as hematuria blood in the urine because primary site of action of this drug is the renal system so on chronic use the dapaglyphosin may produce some bladder cancer as well as hematuria what are the drug interactions this drug shows some interaction with few of the laboratory tests so since dapaglyphosin is going to increase the glucose excretion if the glucose is going to be estimated by collection of urine the urinary glucose estimation test may give some positive result when this dapaglyphosin is used so in the diabetic patients the glucose level should not be estimated by this urinary glucose method better glucose level should be estimated by use of blood tests such as GOD POD method or HbA1c method Similarly, another interaction is observed at another laboratory test. This is the structure of glucose. This glucose can be converted into 1,5-anhydroglucetol, AZ. So, the levels of AZ can be estimated by using the 1,5-AZ assay, which indicates a temporary increase in the blood glucose. So, again here, dapaglyphosin 
interferes with 1,5 ACSC, there will produce abnormal results in this 1,5 AG test. What are the side effects? The important side effects of dapagliflozin mainly include nasopharyngitis, back pain, some influenza, nausea and constipation. It can also elevate the LDL cholesterol resulting in the dyslipidemia and it can produce infections like urinary tract infections, increased urination, discomfort with urination, polyuria as well as it can also produce mycotic infections like vulvovaginitis and genital candidiasis. All these are the important side effects of dapagliflozin. How it is given? This drug is available as tablets and it is available at different strengths like 5mg as well as 10mg. The initial dose of this drug is 5mg once daily which can be increased up to 10mg once daily. So that's about this DAPA glyphlozine. This drug is having the suffix glyphlozine which indicates the glucose flow inhibitor. This drug inhibits sodium glucose transporter 2 which is present at S1 segment of proximal convoluted tubule. When this transporter is inhibited, glucose cannot be reabsorbed into the systemic circulation. So glucose is going to be excreted which results in the decreased glucose levels within the serum. That's why this drug can be used in the type 2 diabetes mellitus. But since this drug is going to increase the glucose excretion, it can increase the fungal infections like vulvovaginitis and gentle mycotic infections. It can also impair the renal functionality. And importantly, this drug can also produce some symptomatic hypotension in the patients because of volume contraction. So the patients with volume depletion, otherwise the patients who are under the treatment of loop diuretics, even elder patients or patients with impaired renal functionality, in all these patients dapagliflozin produce some symptomatic hypotension resulting in the low urinary volume, increased pulse rate and drying of mucosal membranes like dry mouth. All these conditions can be observed with the dapagliflozin. Hypoglycemia is another important side effect that can be observed with this dapagliflozin when it is combined with either insulin preparations or insulin secretogogs. This drug may also elevate the LDL cholesterol which is more important in the patients who are having atherosclerosis. On chronic use, this drug may precipitate some bladder cancer. So care should be taken to avoid this drug for longer periods. This drug is available as a tablet form at 2 strengths 5mg as well as 10mg. The initial dose of the drug is 5mg once daily and it can be increased up to 10mg once daily based on the efficacy of the treatment. So that's about this dapagliflozin. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.